want y'all to know something today. We got a reason to be grateful. We got a reason to be grateful. Every time I see Sister uh, 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 Mercer's sister coming here, whether she's on a stick or on a cane, I'm giving God praise because it could have went another way. Amen. When we look around at the things and the stuff that goes on in our life and in the lives of our families, God has been good to us. God has been faithful. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know God has been faithful? Amen. God has been faithful. When the enemy counted us out, God counted us in. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I just rose today to give my appreciation to God for what he's done and what he's doing. What he's doing in the lives of his people. Amen. Sometimes we forget. And sometimes we don't forget. Sometimes we just don't acknowledge just how good God is. Amen. But I want you to know something. God is so good to us. Amen. You got a car to drive. Amen. You got a house to live in. Amen. You're not sleeping on the floor. You got a bed. You got sheets and covers. Even if they're not clean, you got them. Amen. We give God praise. Amen. We give God praise. Amen. Sometimes we be worrying about stuff that we, amen, but we, we, we got to really look at how far God has brought us from. Amen. I was thinking about it the other day. I was riding down the road and tears just started falling from my eyes. The Lord just said this. I was driving and the Lord just took me in my mind. He took me to the house that I grew up in, a wooden house sitting on bricks. And the Lord said, now you, your house is built on a foundation. You, you own a, you in a brick home. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God has given you your own. Hallelujah. Amen. When you look at you look back on where God has brought you from. Amen. See, people see your, they see your glory, but they don't know your story. They don't know what you had to go through to get to where God has brought us. Amen. I tell you, we shouldn't have to have no cheerleaders. First lady shouldn't have to get up here and sweat her clothes out, trying to get you to lift your hands and give God praise. You know where you came from. You know where you used to stay. Hallelujah. You know, you remember them jelly sandwiches, them syrup sandwiches. You remember them mayonnaise sandwiches. When that, you put that miracle whip on that bread and rub, flip it over and eat it. And, and you were just so happy in them old raggedy diapers. Amen. And God done brought you from all of that. Y'all ain't said nothing to me yet. Amen. And brought just brought us somebody a long way. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Amen. He done brought us a mighty long way. Amen. If you really be honest with yourself, and our parents couldn't always buy new cars. They had to buy used cars. Now, come on, talk to me, somebody. Some of them, many of our parents, they bought cars, but they had to buy used cars. But God has brought us now to where we can drive what we want to drive. Live where we want to live. Well, what we want to have. Amen. Stay in the cars and try to decide. Glory to God. God has brought us from a mighty long way. Are y'all still here? This economy is tough, and God has still got you keeping up with you. You still eat what you want to eat. Hallelujah. You get a taste for crawfish? Damn it is. You get a taste for steak? Damn it is. You get a taste for safe food? Damn it is. Amen. God's been good to us. That's all I'm saying. Amen. We shouldn't have to pump and prime you. Somebody should have to get up here and give me a J. Give me a J. Give me a X. All that. Uh oh. And we shouldn't have to do all of that. Amen. You should have came in here grateful. Amen. You sit at the table this morning and ate pork chops and grits and eggs and biscuits. How many of you said much food you didn't know? How? Maybe you could eat it all. You ate it and you said, man, I want to go in there and lay down and go to sleep. But you start thinking about the goodness of God. You said, let me get on up from this table and go give God some praise. God's been good to us. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm, all I'm trying to say, you done went from wishful thinking to actually having the desires of your heart. Oh, y'all still here? Amen. God's been good to us. I tell you, I, I want to invite you to go back down memory lane. That's all you gotta do. Forget about everybody else. I'm talking about you. Go, go down, go down your own personal memory lane. Some stuff that you was in that 
you didn't know you could get out of. Stuff that you didn't know you could get over. I don't know if I could ever get over this. And now you're over it. Life goes on and God has taught you lessons in life. We got a reason. A right and a reason to praise the Lord. If you could just stand for just a moment. Let's just give him some praise. We've already had prayer. Took our daughter back to college, 
And I told my wife, I said, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Something, something wrong. Something, something going on. So we went Monday. Monday night, I went to work. I wasn't feeling well. I just went on to work. I said, maybe, you know, throughout the day, you know, I'll start feeling better or whatever. And uh, Monday night, got home. And my wife, my wife said, well, we got we to gotta go. We got we to take you to the urgent care, to the hospital or something. When I got to the hospital uh, and the doctor started running tests, he said, uh, I don't even know how you still standing up. He said, your sugar is over 500. And I was headed towards a diabetic coma. But look at God. He said, I don't even know how you were standing. He said, you was headed to the ICU. When Pastor talked about the ICU, he said you was headed to the ICU. But I come to tell you that God is a healer. And God is a way maker. God is a provider. I know him to be healer. And that's why God was on you on Sunday. That's why God had you pleading the blood. Because he knew what was going on with me. Amen. But I stand to tell you that I'm healed. I, I'm healed. I'm healed. Amen. I'm starting to feel like myself again on yesterday. And, and you never know what somebody's going through. Amen. And, and, and the doctor told me, he said, man, I don't even know. When, he, when they put me, when they put, the, they put the IV in my arm, started giving me fluids, and my potassium was low. Everything was just, all my numbers were just low. And, and low and high. It was just a mixture of things. And he said, man, I don't even know how you walked in here the way your sugar is. But look at me now. Amen. Truly, God is a blessing. I wanted to share that testimony with y'all. That y'all keep y'all faith in God. And keep y'all coming and giving God the praise. Because you never know. You're talking about getting through a rough week. Amen. That message was for me. Amen. And the Lord brought us through. Amen. And so I wanted to share my testimony on this morning. Amen. So that it be encouragement to somebody to keep on keeping on. Scripture reading this morning is... Uh, from Psalms 95 and 1. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. For the Lord is great and, and a great king above our gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it. And his hand formed the dry of the land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. May God have a blessing to be hearing the reading of his word. You're now in the hands of the praise and worship team at this time. Come on, give God a praise on this morning.
through Friday of next week. Pastor Shillis will be preaching at New Heart Church of God in Christ for the pastoral appreciation of Superintendent Cedric Howard on Sunday, April 28th at 4 p.m. Everyone is encouraged to support. The Houston District Choir annual day will be on Sunday, May 18th. There will also be a play called What in Hell Do You Want? Which our elder Jonathan Davis is a cast member. All right. Everyone is asked to support, especially the youth. Please continue to pray for those who are sick as well as our children at school. Special prayers from Mother Muriel Smith, Mother Laverne Mercer, Mother Lily Hogan, Mother Beulah Demas, Mother Curly Haynes, Mother Helen Davis, Sister Barbara Ross, Sister Lisa Jefferson and family, Sister Tisha Pat, Sister Paul Emanuel, Sister Brick Emanuel, Sister Jamil Pat, Sister Lucretia Watts, Pastor Roosevelt and Mother Zola Sanford, Carter Whitaker, Sister Yolanda Brumfield, Sister Stacy Redu, Mrs. Cynthia Sanchez, Missionary Laverne Dudley Brown, Sister Sadie Wilson, Sister Rose Pack, Sister Anthony Davenport, Sister Gloria Moore, Brother Barry Jones, Brother Lydell Haynes, Mrs. Lauren Wynn, Sister Benita Pack, Brother Larry Booth Sr., Mrs. Candy Madrigal, Mr. Vincent, Brother Melvin Grant Jr., Brother Ricky Jones, and Mr. Reginald Manuel, as well as others. Happy birthday to everyone who is and has celebrated during the month of April. Happy birthday to Sister Myra Grumfield. Happy birthday to Jameson and Henry. Grandma's thought of the week. No one fights against God and wins. Amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise. <laughs> Truly, the Lord is worthy to be praised. Amen. Please govern yourself to the announcement at this time. We're moving further into service. It's seed and harvest time. Amen. Amen. I said it's seed and harvest time. Amen. Amen. Let us find ourselves guilty of sowing into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. If you're in need of an envelope, please raise your hand and this young man will gladly assist you.
be blessed. For your name is greatly and greatly to be praised. For the word of God said that you will give seed to the sowers. And we thank you, God, for how you constantly give us seed to sow. For God, you said you give it back to us. Good men just press down, shake it together and run it over. Shall we give it to our bosom? And so, God, we believe your word and we come this morning cheerfully giving it to your house. Thanking you for all the things that you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lift that seed up in your right hand. And say, all of this seed leaves my hand. It will never leave my life. For I'm sowing in the good ground. Now come from where you are this morning and put your seed at this time.
man of God that will bring forth the word on today. Amen. Just before I introduce him, I want to also say on last Sunday, we didn't say very much about Brother Alpha Johnson. We thank God for his family who are very faithful members of the church. We're so thankful to the Lord for them. And next Sunday, we're going to recognize that as Alfred Johnson's day. Amen. 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 Young man was very faithful to the church. Very gifted athlete. Uh, had uh, scholarship opportunities. Very good athlete in football and basketball. Amen. And um, we, our hearts are saddened when we think about it. We, we, we love this family very much and we have committed ourselves to uh, recognizing and acknowledging him. Amen. We thank God that his family is still here. They're very faithful members of the church. We thank God for them. And on today, as we prepare our hearts to hear a word from the Lord, I want to just take a few moments to uh, acknowledge uh, the good works and the good deeds of our speaker, Elder Isaac. I don't know if that's his dad. I think about his dad. Elder Jonathan Davis. I said, let me say, Elder Isaac Davis. And that's his father. His father and mother is here today. They are here from Beaumont, Texas to uh, hear their son, their only son. Amen. In whom they are very proud of. Amen. And I want to say from a pastoral perspective, they have so much to be proud of. The very fine young man very friendly individual and um, a very faithful servant of God. And I want to appreciate him. Uh, I want to say to them publicly, you've done an outstanding job. <laughs> it's not a Sunday that goes by I ask him, how's mom and dad? Amen. Because I recognize the the home training. I re recognize we've gotten away from that. We need to go back to that. When our children become successful, they don't become successful on their own. We are all standing on the shoulders of somebody. Amen. If they're respectful, if they're memorable, somebody put that in them. And that should be always acknowledged first over the accomplishments that they have. They have that because somebody put it in them. Amen. Uh, we are so thankful for his father, Elder Isaac Davis, his mother, uh, missionary, Veronica Davis. We thank God for them. He come from good, good stock. Amen. Good stock. We knew long before he started preaching, he was going to preach. We knew he was going to preach because he was preaching in the Sunday school. He was supposed to be reviewing the lesson. I said, Brother, brother, you see him? This boy is preaching. This boy is preaching. He was literally preaching before he accepted the call. The, the, the gift of preaching was on him and he uh, we are very proud of him in the tenure of his membership we have not had any incidents of him having issues with anybody see these are the types of things pastors are supposed to acknowledge never had any misunderstanding with nobody, nobody has come to First Lady and I and say, Elder Davis done this, that, or but no, just been a good member. Amen. Anytime I ask the church to do something, he's one of the first to do it. 
He has never, although he's here and he works here, he has always been a faithful tither. He has always supported the church financially. He has supported First Lady and I. And these are the kinds of things that you can't make up. You just have to be actually doing it in order for it to be said. Amen. So I, I take great pride in, 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 in recognizing him as one of our good members. Every pastor has good members. He had to love all his members, but, but every pastor has some good members. He's one of my good members. I thank God for him. Amen. I want to make one more acknowledgement. I remember some years ago and I called him and Mercer, another one of our ministers. I called him in the office and I was going to I was going to ordain all three of them at the same time or on the same year. And I gave them a prerequisite to me. And only one met the prerequisite that day, that that year. Amen. And that was Elder Mercer. Elder Davis is one of those that said, Pastor, I'm sorry. I didn't do everything you wanted me to do. And if you want me to come next year, I'll go next year. The other minister left and went to another church. Elder Davis continued to support the church. He continued to do everything he was supposed to do. He never got an attitude. He never changed. That's a good man. Are y'all still here? And I, I wanted to, I want his parents to hear me say this. He has been an example. And wherever he has fallen short, he was accountable. And that's what we need today. We need accountability. Amen. You cannot lead God's people when you don't have accountability. Amen. It doesn't make you weak to acknowledge that you were wrong or you made a mistake. Amen. That shows your godly character. It shows that you are ready and you are fit to stand before the people of God. It's with great pleasure. I want you guys to stand today to acknowledge our speaker today, Elder Jonathan Davis. Let's say amen. Bless the Lord. Clap your hands. That was all right for me, but God is the greatest. If you know he's your savior, your king, your provider, come on and clap your hands. Lift your voice. And praise our God. You may be seated. Amen. This morning, we can certainly give honor to God. Thank God for our leader here at Rhema. Celebrate Pastor Tillis, Lady Tillis. Amen, amen. God, he, he, he stated that about me. Amen. But he's a great pastor. Amen. And he's a great man. Amen. And certainly, amen. That's somebody you would want to follow. Amen. Amen. Nevertheless, I thank God for my parents. Here this morning, it's not that often that we, amen, anymore get a chance to worship together, amen, in the same room as they're in Beaumont and I'm here in Houston, amen, but I thank God that they are here this morning, amen, and I, I don't, my, my dad, he, he normally, he used to put me on the spot, I'm going uh, to ask him to, to come and sing for us this morning. Amen. Since he's here, amen. I know every time I go to Boma, they're going to use me for something. Amen. So I just got to be ready. Amen. But nevertheless, I'm glad he's here this morning. He didn't bring his guitar. Amen. He didn't bring the harmonica. Amen. But nevertheless, he's here. Amen. And I know he can, amen, sing, amen, and lift up, amen, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to come. Come on, help me welcome, amen, the original 
gentleman, Davis. God bless you. We grateful on today. You may be seated in the house of God. But yeah, he put me on the spot, but that's all right. How many of y'all know payday is coming after a while? Amen. <laughs> hey, we do give greetings on today. We bring you greetings from Temple of Praise Church of God in Christ, where I serve as assistant pastor. My wife is here as a missionary. But we always wanted to get in the service. I watch you guys on video. I said, I want to get over here and bless the Pastor Chillis, amen, and Lady Chillis, because they have been inspiration, not only to my son, but we've watched their ministry grow. We remember when y'all was on the other side. But God has got greater plans for you. Let me get on, because he's ready to preach. Is that all right? Go to be flat for me, my brother. We're going to get something. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me, yeah. Speak in respect of want, 
For I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Verse 12, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer. Here's the verse we need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Amen. Just for a few moments of your time, amen. Would you help me announce this text, this subject matter to your neighbor? Tell them, neighbor, neighbor. With, God, with God, I can. I can. That was the wrong somebody. Find you another person. Tell them, neighbor, neighbor. with God, God, I can. I can. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Amen. As we hear this word from the Lord. With God, I came. Amen. Too often many people find themselves uh, chasing after certain statuses. Yeah, they find themselves looking, amen, or in the point of life to which they consider to be success. Yeah, for some it's having a big house. Others is having the latest or most expensive car. Yeah, yeah. Having six or seven figures in the bank. Yeah. To others, it may be climbing the ladder in their careers or achieving a level of notoriety yeah. amongst their friends and peers. Yeah, yeah. In today's society, it seems everybody wants to be followed. Yeah. Everybody wants to be liked. Yeah, and if you just pay attention, even all of these uh, social networks, such as uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, so on and so forth, they have what is called an algorithm. Yeah, they have what is called or known as a feed. Yeah, and so whether you're on any of these platforms, the feed consists of photos or videos or even text threads that's been posted by people you follow or either some similar post that's been suggested based on what you liked. Yeah, yeah, if you tend to like uh, cars, for example, it'll show you more cars. If you tend to like comedy, it'll show you more comedy and humorous things. Because it wants to feed what's your appetite. Right. Yeah, it, it, it wants to feed and show you that which interests you. Yeah, I'm moving on, but nothing is wrong with social media. But if you're not careful, you'll find yourself comparing your journey to the likes of someone else. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, Roosevelt once quoted that comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah, this is why stress, depression, and anxiety are at an all-time high. Yes, sir. Because many are in an inner battle with themselves to impress, to outperform, and live up to the standards of someone else. Yeah, this is the pressure of, if you will, keeping up with the Joneses. Yes, yeah, and I know being a boss is trendy. Being self-made is trendy and it sounds good, but the reality is none of us can make it without God. Yes, Bible says in John 1 and 3 that through him all things were made. Yes. And without him nothing was made that was made. Right. Yeah, to make it plain, in other words, God is our creator yes, and we are simply his creation yes, right. although we're made in his image and made in his likeness you will discover ladies and gentlemen that our flesh is yet flawed yes, because of our sinful nature within our flesh there remains some weaknesses mm, because of the flesh yeah there remains some uh, inability, some 
inadequacies that will ultimately prove that we need God. Tell somebody, I don't know about you, but I need God. Yeah, I, I don't have it all together. I'm not the strongest individual. Sometimes I get weak. Sometimes I go through things. Sometimes I face problems and challenges in my life, but I realize I need God. Yeah, not only do we need God with us, but tell somebody you need God in you. Yeah, yeah, we need God in us. Uh -huh. When God is in us, we will have love. When, when God is in us, we'll have joy. When, when God is in us, we will have peace. We'll have power. We'll have the victory. Yes, Jesus said that I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Yeah, they told me in, in, in school about compound words. Amen. Sometimes we just pass over that nothing. Amen. But if you break it down, it shows that it's no thing. Yeah, so without God, you can do no thing. Yeah, that's what the writer was trying to tell us. And so, uh, I don't know about you, but I can't do it on my own. Yeah, there's some stuff that I realize I need God's help. And moving on here, so that it was in our text today where the Apostle Paul has composed this letter to the church at Philippi. Uh, please understand and take note not only of what Paul writes, but from where he's writing from. Mm, yes, my brothers and sisters, in this portion of the text, Paul is in prison. He's been detained. He's been constrained. Mm -hmm. And restricted. Not because he's done anything wrong for Certainly, we know that even in America today, that crime can simply mean being the wrong shade. Yes, Help me when you can. Yes, At the wrong time. Yes, and in the wrong place. Yes, However, Paul was simply preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus. Yes, yeah, he was doing what he was commissioned to do. That which he was purposed and empowered to do, yet and still he was accused of disrupting the peace. Mm, and isn't that just like the enemy, uh, right? When you go to do that which God has called you to do, not everybody is going to like it. Not everybody is going to celebrate or support it. You may have some haters. You may have or lose some so-called friends, but just as long as God is pleased. Yeah, just as long as you are obeying Him, doing what He's called you to do, then everything will be all right. How do I know? How do you know it? For He told us in His Word. Yeah, what did He say in Romans 8 and 30? What He said, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, then who can be against us? Uh, tell somebody beside you, I just want to please God. Yeah, yeah, that ought to be in our spirits to please God. That ought to be our goal and our mission as believers to please God. Mm, I believe the Apostle Paul was seeking uh, to do just that. Yeah, be pleasing unto God. But to the Romans, Paul had become a threat. Simply because he began to shake up some stuff. His preaching and teaching shook up their traditions. Bishop, it shook up their religion. So much so until it drove them to want to get rid of him. They felt as though he was gaining too much influence. He was 
he was getting too much attention, too much traction. They felt they were slowly losing control of their society. And perhaps even today some of us ought to stop and see where we are and what's happening around us. Yeah, I'm sure you discover that there is some stuff in your life that needs to be shaken. Yeah, there, there are some communities we live in and, and some people we live around that needs to be shaken. Yeah, some of our homes and families need a good shaken. Our government needs to be shaken. Yeah, so we got to shake up some stuff. When we see that which is immoral and unethical, being done, certainly we need to a good shake. Yeah, watch this. What happens when you shake something? Uh, a disruption occurs. Mm -hmm. When you shake something, yeah, that which was comfortable becomes uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I, I was looking in the refrigerator, amen, and noticed even on a carton of juice. Sometimes when you just buy it, that manufacturer, that producer knows that by the time they put it in that car, yes. and by the time you get ready to consume it, yes. there are some ingredients inside that may have set up to the bottom. But if you shake well before use, you'll get all of the ingredients that it'll taste how it was intended to be tasted. Yeah, tell somebody you gotta shake it up. Shake it up. Yeah, shake up some things. Hallelujah. And so this was Paul's uh, doing. And this is how they appeared. He was appearing unto them to be a disruptor. Mm-hmm. When you shake some things up, man, it's time now that we even the church will boldly declare God's truth. And display God's power. Mm -hmm. So Paul was doing as instructed. He received some backlash. But would one would assume that after being wrongfully and falsely accused, it would only result in hurt. Yeah, you would assume that being falsely accused, it'll result in him being angry. Oh, what a painful feeling knowing that you did no wrong but still having to suffer. Perhaps that sounds like somebody y'all know. Mm -hmm. Jesus did no wrong. In fact, the Bible says that he was without sin. But we discovered that he had to still yet suffer on a hill called Calvary. And can I tell you this morning that just because one day Ah, you decided to give the Lord your heart and the preacher your hand. That, that doesn't mean that life will suddenly become easier for you. No, that's, that's, that's not what that means. But it doesn't mean that you'll never have to, to go through any hardships. It doesn't mean that you won't have to face any of life's difficulties. But on the contrary, living for Christ will sometimes make you a target for the enemy. Mm -hmm. If Job were here and could testify, he'll tell you that man born of a woman is of a few days, and those days are full of trouble. In other words, you're going to have to go through some things. Yeah, you're going to have to experience both the highs and lows of life. Yeah, I love it because Paul, although he was suffering, he didn't respond like some of us would have responded. Mm -hmm. He didn't respond with a complaint. He didn't respond claiming to have been church hurt. Paul didn't even respond blaming the devil or anyone else for his current confinement. Rather, Paul responded with a sense of gratitude and joy. Did y'all hear what I say? He responded with gratitude and joy. Earlier I told you he was in prison. But yet he's responding with gratitude and joy. 
He opens this portion of the letter by thanking and celebrating God. He says, God, I, I thank you for this, this, this church of Philippi. He tells them that you supported me when you didn't have to. Not only did they pray for him, but they had previously gotten together amongst themselves and raised an offering, if you will, to send to Paul. Mm -hmm. One historian explains it that during this time period under the Roman system, those that were accused of a crime and were waiting a trial, they had to pay for their own food, their own blanket, their own rent yeah. Yeah. in jail, in prison. Yeah. yeah, and in essence, not only did it cost them uh, their personal freedom, but it also cost them financially. Yeah, and so there was a need there that Paul needed to be met. And this church came to his rescue. Yeah, and so Paul was appreciative and thankful for the simple fact that they cared. Yeah, and I just wonder if there anybody here this morning grateful for the fact that somebody cared for you. Yeah, they cared enough to pray for you. Cared enough to teach you right from wrong. They, they, they made sure and may, may not have a whole lot of money, but they cared enough to send the, simply lend you a helping hand. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody, I thank God that he cares. Yeah, yeah. Not only was Paul thanking and rejoicing in the loan, but I love the fact that he takes time out to encourage them to do the same. Yeah, he tells them, uh, for foremost, stay with God. Mm -hmm. Not to waver. Not only should you stay with him, but Paul continues on by telling them in verse 4 of the text to rejoice in the Lord. Always. And to drive home the point, he repeats himself. He said, and again, I say, rejoice. In other words, Paul was telling them, ah, you may encounter opposition. But whatever you do, don't stop praising God. Don't stop acknowledging God. Don't stop thanking God. Yeah, you ought to continue to be glad in him. He says you ought to celebrate and praise God every chance that you give. Yeah. Yet I find it mind-boggling how some of us will go through tests, go through trials, only to come in church and sit down. Yeah. We sit down on our praise. We sit down on our hallelujah. We sit down on our thank you. We, as if God had to do what he's done for us. Mm, but he is a good God. He's worthy to be praised. Mm -hmm. And so it was here. Yeah, Paul was thankful and rejoicing. He instructs them, don't stop praising. Yet he tells them in addition to rejoicing, I want you all to be anxious for nothing. Mm-hmm. That word anxious simply means don't worry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, every time you're tempted to worry, take that as an invitation to pray. Uh -huh. Paul, in a sense, was giving them the formula. Yes, sir. Let the church say formula. Oh, yeah. The secret recipe and which he found, he lets them know that praise plus prayer minus worry Equals God's peace. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to rewind the tape for you. Praise plus prayer. Subtracting worry. Equals God's peace. Mm -hmm. It's right there in the text. Bible reads. And the peace of God. Which surpasses all understanding. Shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Paul was trying to convey to them that if you simply follow the formula, not only will you experience the peace that God gives, but you'll also experience God's presence. 
Mm, he was really telling the church here to shift their focus. Early in this letter, Paul had admonished them to let this mind be in you. That which was also in Christ Jesus. Despite the circumstances, in spite of what it looks like, we as believers ought to have the mind of Christ. What does that look like? I'm glad you asked. I tell you, Christ always expressed humility. Yes, sir. Jesus was the epitome of love. Yes, always thinking of and showing concern for others above himself. Yes, yeah, and so when we have and when we take on the mind of Christ, you too will be a man able to show and express your love. Yes. Yeah, you will be able to, to show Amen. Kindness yes, towards others. Yes. Amen. I've never seen so many mean saints. Right. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta be more loving, more welcoming. Yes. Yes. Well, hey. Amen. Help me when you can. Yes. Amen. Nevertheless, Amen. The Apostle Paul, after thanking them for their support and encouraging them to stay with God and rejoice in the Lord. He leaves them with this personal testimony. Uh, Paul writes in verse 11, uh, that that I speak in respect of want. But Paul, in, I'm confused, aren't you in prison? At the very least, I'd expect you would want to be released. Yeah, you would want, you would think you would want to be free. Yeah. Paul says, actually, I have no personal wants or needs. Why is that? He continues by saying, for I have learned in whatsoever state I mean. Yeah, he said, I've learned therewith to be content. Uh, watch this, church. Contentment means being satisfied and at rest. Contentment means, yeah, being rest, at rest with where God has you despite what's happening all around you. Yeah, contentment, being satisfied. It's not a natural or an automatic thing, but it must be learned. Paul says, after all the persecution, after all the trials I've endured, I've learned to be content. How is it that we as believers can get to a place of contentment like that of Paul? Here it is. We must learn first and foremost to trust in God. Amen. Learn that God always, uh, he won't fail. Oh, yes. When you trust in him, he won't fail. He won't let you down. Right. When you trust in him, you will learn that God always has a purpose and a plan. Yeah, I may not know the details, but I still trust him. I may not know all the reasons, but I still trust him. Look what he says here in the next verse, verse 12. I know both how to be a base and how to abide. Paul says, I'm just as happy with as little as I am with much. He says, I know it was, it was a difficult one for you because... Uh, we live in a society where more seemingly is not enough. Yeah, yeah. But Paul says, I found the real recipe for having joy. Yeah, that recipe is not in stuff. It's not found in material things. It's not in clothes or money or jewelry. Rather, it's in that which the eyes cannot be seen. Uh, for the things, he says, which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Yes, Tell somebody, you got to set your eyes, set your eyes. on things on above. Things above. Yes. Mm -hmm. I got to go here, but I got to give you this. Paul then records uh, one of the most known and quoted verses throughout the Bible. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, here in verse 13 out of the text, Paul makes this declaration that simply says, I can do all things 
through Christ, yes, yes. which strengthens me. Yes. Yeah, it was simple yet profound. Oh, he didn't mean in a literal sense that he can do outrageous things or unrealistic things. Yeah. But rather, Paul's contentment and his strength was tied to Christ and Christ alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah he overcome. Uh, he told them the only reason I was able to endure, the only reason I was able to overcome was not of my own strength. My yeah, it was not of my own abilities. Yeah. For if it was, I would have failed a long time ago. Yeah. I would have crumbled under the pressure if it was based on my own strength. But on the contrary, it was all because of Jesus. It's in Him that I move. And it's in Him that I, I live. It's in Him that I have my very being. And that's what I want to leave with you today. That don't ever forget the fact that it is God. Yeah, it's God that's sustaining you. Tell somebody it is God. It's God that is maintaining you. He's the source of my strength. He's the strength of my life. It's because of him that all things, tell somebody all things are possible. Why don't you have five a neighbor and declare to them, tell them about it, it is possible. It's possible to reach your dreams. It's possible that God will answer your prayer. It's possible that your son and daughters will be saved. Tell somebody, it is possible. It is possible. Uh, in fact, God made it possible. Yeah, well, church, drop me down, pity. It's been fun. But I gotta run. But before I go, I want to let you know that it is possible with God. But first and foremost, tell somebody you got to have faith. For I heard the Bible say that without faith, it's impossible. to me that with faith it is possible to please the Lord. So I just wonder today, is there anybody that has have their faith in God? Don't fool me now, but come on, raise your hand. If you have faith in God, you see prayer but it's your faith that unlocks the door. Faith moves mountains. Faith walks on water. It is that can speak to the storm and the winds and the waves. Why don't you ask your neighbor? speak for you and you can't speak for me but my faith is in God if I somebody said if I have the faith then God has got the power tell somebody it is possible with God I can make it with God no matter what comes my way, my life is in his hand. Tell somebody my faith, my trust, my hope, my belief is in God. I'm going to stay with
Joy comes in the morning. Remember there's a friend in Jesus.
Bible says, let him that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. There is an anointing of peace in the room right now. I command every, I command every storm to cease in the name of Jesus. Every storm in your home, every storm in your relationship, every storm connected to you and commanded to cease. In the name of Jesus. My God today. Hey, hey, hey. Woo! I just need somebody to show Jesus is the Prince of Peace. you 